집어면서 들어가 할때 찾아 나머진 바빠 Ciao. Um, I bought Luna this new toy ages ago. Like, not ages ago, like a week ago or so. Look how cute it is. It is a Frankenstein toy. And I haven't given it to her yet. I um, just wanted to like get it on camera because I think she's gonna like it. I'm just gonna reposition the camera. Luna, sit. Luna, sit. Good girl. <laughs> Good girl. Do you want this toy? Is that your new toy? people I hope wherever you are in the world you are feeling good feeling good um it's Thursday and it has been a week <laughs> it's been a long week a lot has been happening um on the work front and I'm not gonna lie I'm feeling rather run down and exhausted I probably look it as well yay um last night i went to see the king and i with ellen and it was really really great i don't know why but i went in not expecting it to be really good and um i think that's because it's in london for four days so it's playing at the new wimbledon theater and there is absolutely no hype or promo about the King and I, which is really bizarre because it's a really fantastic, like classical musical, and no one's talking about it. Like, it's not really, I, I haven't seen it anywhere on social media. If Ellen hadn't, like, received an email about it, because I think she signed up to the new Wimbledon Theatre, we wouldn't have known. Luna. She likes to growl at the dogs in the garden. Um, but it was so 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 good like I really enjoyed it and the actor who plays the king I'll put his name here I forget his name um, it's like a really really big Broadway um, actor and he's been in like he's directed he's choreographed he's he was in Victor Victoria with Julie Andrews um, the cast was so great and like the casting was fantastic I was kind of concerned that it was going to be like not in keeping with um, Luna, Luna, Luna. Anyways, um, Luna gets really um, riled up when she sees other dogs downstairs. Um, I wanted to update you guys real quick on my reading. So I feel like I'm reading too many. Luna, Luna, Luna. Good girl. I feel like I'm reading too many things right now and there are certain, there are two books that are taking a while for me to get through because I'm reading too many different things and I don't really know why. I think it's just sometimes I'm not in the mood to pick up a certain genre and I like having options basically. So at the moment I am reading uh, Be Right Back, How to Overcome Separation Anxiety 
because Luna has separation anxiety and this book was recommended to me um it seems to be the best out there so I'm almost done with that I'm just making my way through that and then I've spoken about this I think in the last vlog um a little life I've made like close to no progress here I am on page 33 and I, this book scares me because so many people have said that it's so heart-wrenching but it's fantastic so I do really want to read it but little to no progress um and then I'm reading A Court of Frost and Starlight uh which is part of the A Court of, the, of Thorns and Roses um series and this is the fourth book and it's the shortest one so the books are like between 500 and 700 pages 750 800 pages long and this one is um relatively short it's like 250 about 60 percent through so i'll finish that today or tomorrow luna 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 stop good girl um and then i have just started um the five level and ah the five love languages by gary chapman because i know of the five love languages and i've taken the test but i haven't actually read the book and i'm curious so i'm reading the book um my love languages are quality time and acts of service if you were curious um and then ellen got me this um the wrapping paper is so pretty which is why i've kept it but ellen got me this book um as a little present called the joy of small things by hannah jane parkinson and it's such a like pretty book um and it's this book that has so like the chapters are basically like going through the small things so the perfect dressing gown and like how these small things can like contribute an exorbitant amount of happiness to a person but they're really small so plays without intervals kissing cover versions ice cream vans clean bedding window seats i don't like window seats uh pockets private jokes foreign idioms reading on the beach phone calls dogs in the park finding lost things closing browser tabs acknowledgements arriving early baths wallpaper flirting video games a last minute goal a cup of tea um so i'm really excited to just carry this around with me and just like pop into it like dip in and out um and read the ones that i think are really like that i that make me really happy um so thank you so much ellen this is such a lovely present it made me so happy when i opened it um I have a really long day today and I think what I'm struggling with right now at work is that, let me just put that there, I'm in this transition period which I think I have spoken about before, I'm moving to this new role and in order to sit fully in that role I have to do various things, like I have to build out this team and train this team and I'm not enjoying it is the is me being honest um and it is really tough because it's been so chaotic for the last like three or four years um there's been like no structure so just building all of that out and then seeing other members of the team that are able to focus on like more exciting projects is really tough um and in order to kind of protect my energy and make sure that i'm just focused on this i've been pulled out of everything else which again is has been difficult because I have to focus on like the less enjoyable stuff. Um, hopefully it won't be for too much longer, but I am finding it really, really difficult um, and really draining as well, but as is life sometimes. Um, those are kind of my updates. <laughs> I don't really know what's happening this weekend. Um, I'm quite tired, so it might be a lazy one, but yet to be determined. Um, I am going for a walk with Hayley and like coffee and a walk on Sunday and that will be really, really lovely. Um, Luna will be going to daycare so that I can just be with my friend. <laughs> and um, 
Luna was looked after yesterday by some people in my building, a couple, and she had the best time with them and they're just, there are such amazing people around us, like there are amazing people in the world who are just really kind um, and I'm starting to see that more and more and just really appreciating it. So anyways, I feel like I'm waffling. I am going to go and get back to work and I will chat to you guys later. Aloha. Um, this evening I have the privilege of not one puppy, of not one furry friend, but two. <laughs> so I have Luna with me, of course, and I have the pleasure of having Milo for the evening as well because Jade's birthday is tomorrow and him and Gal are going for this like, I forget what it's called, I'm sure like they'll explain at some point, I'll have them explain at some point, um, or if not I'll just pop it down here. Uh, but they're going for this like experience which for dinner which is like a few hours and they didn't want to leave Milo alone so they brought him here and for Valentine's Day um, Alex got Luna this like Serrano ham like bone but he got her two so I got I gave one to Luna and I gave one to Milo and they're so happy <laughs> like look so here we have Mr. Milo. Milo, is that yummy? Good boy. Okay, please don't choke slowly, yeah? And then we have Miss Luna over here. Hi, sweetheart. Is that yummy? I really didn't want her like chewing that on her bed because like it is really fatty and it smells. I think I'm just gonna have to wash her bed after this because she doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't want to get up. But at least they're entertained. One furry friend, another furry friend. Hayley and that was lovely. We also went to Daunt Books in Marlebone which is one of my like top three favourite bookshops in London and I just absolutely love going there and I find it really hard to resist not buying anything so these are the books that I bought. <laughs> um, I just thought I would show you because I find this interesting. I also absolutely like I had it they gave me a tote bag and I sat on one of them and I've completely destroyed it and I 
don't know if you can really see um but yeah which made me really sad but I bought this one, so Assembly by Natasha Brown, and Haley's read this and said it was very good, and the lady at the bookshop when I bought this was like, oh my god, this is fantastic. She was like, amazing book choices. I was like, thank you. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this one. I've heard good things about it. Um, so yeah. Then in, I don't know how like you say this, Insatiable, Insatiable? That's how I would say it, but by Daisy Buchanan there. Um, and I just thought this one sounded like my type of book so the blurb says stuck in a dead-end job broken-hearted broke and estranged from her best friend Violet's life is nothing like she thought it would be she wants more better friends better sex a better job and she wants it now and then I'm not gonna read the rest of it because I feel like it gives a lot of the book away. And yeah, so really excited about this. Then this was like on, this is like one of the books that they were really like promoting in the bookshop today. Uh, to the One I Love the Best by Ludwig Bemel, Bemelmans. So bad with names, but that's that one. And it says, this is Los Angeles in the 1930s where the parties are fabulous, the cocktails flow and ravishing movie stars and European royalty are on the guest list. Here the last word is good taste. The last word in good taste is had by infamous interior decorator and socialite Elsie DeWolf, Lady Mendel known to her closest friend simply as mother. When Ludwig Bemelmans recently arrived in Hollywood to work as a screenwriter, first meets her. She is 90 years old, devoted to her little dog, Blue Blue, and an unstoppable force. Bemelmans is, a rapidly established, is rapidly established as a member of the family, given a suite in Elisa's dazzling home, and access to the creme de la creme of Hollywood society. Filled to the brim with wit and style, this is a luminous portrait of fabulously eccentric women and a charming whirlwind of friendship. I just thought that sounded like really interesting story then i got cleopatra and Frank frankenstein by coco melors just look how stunning this book is um and this is another one that is uh, set in new york and i just love i just love a book that's set in new york like that's right up my street um and when I got home, um, I opened up my iPad and I had like a notification saying, Kindle recommends this book. And I think it's because, you know, the, all the devices listen to you nowadays, which is terrifying. And then the last one I got was uh, Intimacies by Katie Kitamura. That's it there. It says, an interpreter has come to The Hague to escape New York and work at the International Court. This one's so good, it sounds so good. She's drawn into simmering personal dramas. Her lover, Adrian, is separated from his wife but still entangled in his marriage. Her friend, Jana, witnesses a seemingly random act of violence, a crime the interpreter becomes increasingly obsessed with as she befriends the victim's sister. And she's pulled into an explosive political controversy when she's asked to interpret for a former president accused of war crimes. She is soon pushed to the precipice where betrayal and heartbreak threaten to overwhelm her, forcing her to decide what she wants from her life. We love a book haul. So that is my little book haul 